Happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas. I hope that you're celebrating the feast, the dedication of lights, or the feast that celebrates um, from the Jewish perspective around this time that you're celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. This is a family season. Commercialism seems to go to the forefront, but we're not on the forefront of commercialism. I'm not against buying Christmas gifts. The three wise men brought gifts to Jesus Christ, but we need to understand the real reason for the season. It is about the birth of Jesus Christ, our Savior. He is the reason for our season, Emmanuel, God's with us. So if we're looking at Matthew, the second chapter, and starting at the first verse, now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Israel with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said one unto him, said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this, it, thus it is written by the prophets, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately or privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which, saw, which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come unto the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented him gifts. They gave gifts to our gift. They gave, gift to the, gave gifts to Jesus, who is our gift. And when you look at the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, he ascended and he gave gifts unto men. So the ultimate gift is Jesus Christ. This season is about Jesus Christ and the birth of Jesus Christ and the Virgin Mary. So if we're celebrating and we should celebrate, let's remember the reason. On Christmas Day, instead of getting depressed and worrying about Happy New Year and... Um, having the parties. Let's celebrate the fact that he allowed us to live and see a new year. Let's celebrate the fact that it is Christ's birthday and remember to include him in our giving. Why don't you join us in singing? I wanted to make this a real Christmassy broadcast. So of course I had to have one of my little angels who's pregnant with an angel. So little Destiny can always remember her mom Destiny singing Hark the Herald and she'll remember this story that we made, that we read. God forbid we made. We read from the Bible, Matthew the second chapter about the Virgin Mary. Well, Destiny is not actually the virgin, but she was a virgin when she said, I do. So that counts, but she's carrying little destiny. <laughs> and Joseph, Jonay, both of them with a J, Joseph, Jonay is not here tonight <laughs> to celebrate this. But as we sing, hark the herald, I believe that when we're caroling during this season, we need to sing things that has a biblical foundation, a biblical base. And that song reminded me of this story. Hark the herald angels sing. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sin 
is reconciled. Joyful all ye nations wide, join the triumph of the sky. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Every Christmas when I was raising my children, they're all adults now and all of them are married except for one my youngest, and I'm not rushing him, just praying that he finds his true love, one that has his passion and his heart, and he can love her, and she'll love him. But every Christmas, from the time I gave birth to them, I always opened our Christmas morning with prayer. We always sang the Christmas. I always explained to them. I didn't rob them of the nursery rhymes, the fairy tales, stories, the little storybook uh, of Santa Claus in the North Pole and the kind of things that kids, stories that they read in school and so forth. I made them aware that that is a story, just as if we were reading about Dr. Seuss or any of the nursery rhymes and so forth. I made them aware that that is a story, that there's not a Santa coming from the North Pole. I told them that Jesus is the reason for this season, but I watched the different little things. I took them to the mall and let them sit on Santa's lap if they wanted to, but they understood the true reason for the season. They understood the biblical basis of the holiday rather than shopping, and they were never allowed to be upset because the Christmas tree didn't explode with gifts. They understood that we had to give our gifts uh, at church, that we had to attend church, and we had to get, present our gifts to Jesus. And I always gave each one of them a monetary gift to put in the offering and to say, Happy birthday, Jesus. And I would remind them, if it was your birthday, would you like for people to give everybody else a gift and never say happy birthday to you so that they could understand that? And that is how our Christmas has been. And I plan to do the same thing uh, with my grandchildren as I bless them, give them gifts. I'm also going to tell them the real reason for the season. And I, because I'm a praiser and a worshiper, I don't like to just sing songs just to sing them. I don't sing Here Come Peter Cottontail, Hopping Down the Bunny Trail, because it just does not have any meaning for me. I grew up in the country with rabbits. <laughs> so I saw Peter. I had Peter as a pet, except my pet's name was Pinky. She had little pink eyes, and I had a little bunny. So I understand that bunnies don't lay eggs, those kind of things. So I always understood the true nature of things with the North Pole and, and Santa down the line. So in explaining that, I would like to know what does Christmas mean to you from some of the people that are sitting in the School of the Prophets? How do you celebrate Christmas? What are you thinking about as we're doing this and we're talking about uh, Jesus being the reason for the season? Have you had a reframe? How are your gifts? How has your gifts helped you to embrace the Feast of Dedication of Lights, or the Feast of Lights, and your dedicated Feast of Dedication. How has your knowledge and your understanding improved your Christmas? Well, for me, Christmas is a time of family, and I look forward to spending time with my, um, my cousins, my uncles, my mom and dad, and just a time for us to sit down and tell funny stories and just full of laughter. I remember one time, in particular for Christmas, um, I was a little kid, excited to, you know, un go, go unwrap my presents, and I saw um, this guy in a Santa Claus outfit, and so I'm like, oh, Santa's real, and then when he turned around, it was my dad, <laughs> so I knew then that Santa was not <laughs> real, and, um, but Christmas is always just a time of just, I love spending time with my family, and just being around them, it's just because my family is one of a kind, and so I'm just so thankful for them during the Christmas season. That's good. And during this season, do you have any special prayers, um, things, special things that you would like to pray about that you expect the Lord to do during Christmas for your family, your hopes, your prayers, your dreams concerning their wealth, health? Well, I would love to, to, to see them come to the Lord, 
you know, my family just to, for them to open their hearts and um, to receive Jesus Christ because that's the best gift that they can receive. And um, I, if they open their heart, because they know the truth, so I really hope that they would just open their hearts and mind and receive him. So that would be really the best gift that they could give me. I have to piggyback off of Timothy because it's always been about family. Um, even as a child, my parents would, we would get gifts, but my mom would cook for her entire family, and she had 15 brothers and sisters. Wow. So everybody would come to our house, and we would share Christmas together, and everybody got to open up a gift. So it's always been about family. This year, for my family, we're going to do something different. Now that my kids are grown, and I only have my baby son with me. And your baby is two? No, he's 24. <laughs> I just needed to toy with you because my baby is 35, but I'm always telling him when he's 95, he and his wife will be my baby. That That's does not right. change. Yeah, so this year we're going to do something a little different. Instead of going out and buying gifts, we're going to give to people who cannot give back to oh, us. Wow. So we're going to feed lunch. Um, to people um, that are homeless. What a great gift for them to really experience the real meaning for the season that Christ is the reason for the season, the birth of Christ, giving, giving. back to people. What a great gift. How many of you have ever buried someone that you love? Turn me on. How many of you have ever gone through heartbreak? Turn me on. How many of you have ever experienced an unwanted divorce? Journey on. How many of you have ever lost a dream, what you dreamed of doing all your life? Journey on. How many of you have ever lost a home through bankruptcy, foreclosure, but whatever reason I say to you, journey on. How many of you have ever lost a job, either you were laid off or fired? Journey on. Reinvent yourself. Yes, yes. Menopause made me reinvent myself. Mm -hmm. Having children made me reinvent myself. Yes. Getting married, I had to reinvent myself. Mm -hmm. When I stopped teaching and went into full time <coughs> ministry, I had to reinvent yes. myself. Uh -huh. So life is filled with swift, trans swift transitions, mm -hmm. it's filled with change. So we have to reinvent ourselves and Anything that you have lost is worthy of grief. Dr. Vernette Rozier's newest book, Journey On, is a tool that will help you do the work necessary to grieve in a healthy manner. The book will be released December 2017, but you can pre-order today. If you pre-order today, we will immediately send you the Journey On Drop Card, which includes the four-part Journey On series, plus a two-chapter preview of the Journey On book. For your gift of $75 or more, you will receive the Journey On Drop Card, plus a God of My Dreams t-shirt, journal, and mug. Don't avoid pain. Do the grief work and use this book to help you do the work necessary to grieve in a healthy manner. To place your order, visit our website, vyrosier.org, or you can contact us via phone at 810-DREAM-08. Thank you for supporting Let the Prophet Speak and helping us reach the nations. Four or five years prior to this, I'd started on this book about journey and death and all the journey, the long, complicated, difficult uh, change and development that I had to go through to overcome the death of all of the different individuals in my life. And of course, it set me up to uh, release this book in this month, 2017, Journey On. It deals with the proper way gives you the proper way to deal with that. All kinds of losses. Loss of a job, loss of an opportunity to have children, loss of a marriage, uh, loss of dreams, loss of opportunities. If you, if you have suffered a loss, a loss of love, you, the person you dreamed of marrying and you were never able to marry them and for some reason they met an early demise and now you've just lost the, the opportunity to ever love again. Helping you to cope 
face, cope, and deal with those losses to recover from them. I'm even giving you hints about counseling and therapy and different techniques and things that you can do that will help you to walk through that and things that you can say to comfort others. In fact, I actually visited a grief counselor uh, after I lost my brother in February. And one of the things she said, the best gift that you can give a person sometimes is a thing we never think of, silence. Just sit with them. You don't have to say anything because quite often, what can you say that will change it or fix it? So sometimes all they need is for you to be there with them to, if they ask something, fine. If they don't, it helped me to understand something I read and I was never able to get it with Job when his friends just sat and stared. I thought every time I would read that, I would think, what terrible friends. They're just sitting and staring at you. I didn't realize Job was grieving the loss of health, the loss of his wife, the loss of his children, the loss of his wealth. So the right thing to do was the gift of silence. We'll just be here with you. So I give you a lot of nuggets so that you can actually help and things that you can help children with because children deal with grief and death in a different way. So you have to speak a different language so that they grasp it. And I learned something in my research for that book as well as I was used this 2017 to finish what I worked on for the past three or four years and put it down and picked it up again. I discovered that people that have lost pets and how they grieve. And I had no idea animals grieved. So it's a book that will minister to pet lovers, to helping you understand your pets, helping children, helping men, men grieve differently from women, helping you to cope and understanding that any loss is worthy of grief. You have to grieve the loss of things so that you don't have a meltdown, a breakdown, which I almost had in Boston Airport in 2016 because I had no idea I failed to grieve. Thank God for therapists, counselors. And I had some wonderful therapists, counselors, judges to write me a foreword for the book. I sent them a copy of the book to read and they wrote just powerful forewords about it. So during the season, I want you to embrace your mortality. I want you to embrace your losses. I want you to embrace the fact that we lose people and we'll lose more people during this season because it, because it just has to do with, once again, that circadian rhythm and the time and the season. God holds our time and our season in his hands so that we'll know the right way to not just to um, comfort ourselves, but to comfort others during this time. Someone else would like to talk about their Christmas and how they celebrate their Christmas. Christmas, I wish we had a Jamaican here and a, a German here and a, somebody from France so we can talk about Christmas around the world. How do you celebrate Christmas? Along with, I see LaVeda here. They normally, what happened to those sweet potato pies? LaVeda McCall, who is coming up to the mic. Uh, so that the camera didn't have to turn and catch her hiding down in the pew. But during this time and this season, the kind of things, immediately when I looked at her, which is really odd, I immediately thought about her grandmother's sweet potato pies because I remember for years her grandmother would, our gift was those sweet potato pies, even when Levada brought her down here in her wheelchair and thought she would keep those pies all to herself. And she made the fatal mistake of bringing her grandmother to church. I went over and hugged her and she said, I have your pies at Veda's house. So during that season, and, and I celebrate her, not so much the pies, but the love that went in the pies, that she cared enough to remember us, and in a tangible way. And because her grandmother's a preacher of the gospel, pastor for many years, I think about her during the Christmas season just like I about do you have that the recipe? Pies and the Christmas. But we're both the pies and the Christmas. Do you have that recipe? And can you bake as well as your grandma? And remember, you, thou shall not lie. I Jesus is dare, watching. I wouldn't dare say I can bake as good as she does. But however, you have her recipe. I, I was anointed because oh. my mother was the best <laughs> one. Okay, so we I have some witnesses lie. in the room. <laughs> we have some people raising their hands and lie. attesting to the fact. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, but as far as Christmas and things like that, um, first, I want to say thank you, Jesus. I'm, I'm better now. Christmas was a very, very hard time for me. Um, my mother loved Christmas. We always started with 
singing happy birthday to Jesus. We had a birthday cake. And we would watch It's a Wonderful Life. Well, may I suggest something to you? It's One of the things that I discovered in my research for Journey mm -hmm. On, they said the way to walk through the grief and feel the pain of it and do the grief work so that you can be whole is mm -hmm. to Though during those days, do some of the very things that those people did in honor of them yes, and be around people and just talk about the good times and the laughter. And I'm living proof that that yes, worked. Before this year was out, I buried my brother in February, but I think in August or September, my sisters and I went to a lake cottage and my brother loved fishing. So I picked that lake cottage on my way to Atlanta. I said, we need to all get together. He's not here, and we all go to this cottage. And I text him, and every one of them texts me right back and say, let's do it. And we went fishing every day and talked about man. His name was Emmanuel, God with us. We went fishing every day and talked about him. We came in and cooked the fish and talked about him. Every time it was time to bait my pole, I would remind him, man always brought me a pole. Jackie said, I got it. Uh, somebody's got to stand in for him. They picked up the pole, my sister Gloria. So it made a, it a wonderful memorial, a wonderful time of celebrating his life. And oddly enough, I thought we would cry through the weekend. None of us cried. We all laughed talking about his favorite jokes and what he would say had he been here. So that's a therapeutic tool that you can use. Watch the movie and say, Mom always did this and, and laugh about it. And what would she say? And yes, that's it's healing. Many years, many, many years. Okay, however, well, good. But, but it is. But there. it's never too it's late. It's therapeutic. Because it's a part of the grief right. work. It's not too late. No, it's not. Like I said, I'm better now by the grace of God. But my mother was also sick on Christmas. So what you said about people dying in the hospital, she got sick and went in the hospital right after Thanksgiving. And she died. January 3rd. So it was like, oh, Jesus, don't let her down Christmas. Then it's like, oh, don't die on New Year's. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You know, so <laughs> I, I do understand. And Christmas was her, um, I guess, favorite holiday because yeah. she always celebrated, you know, Jesus' birth. But I'm better now. We, we do that stuff now in honor yeah. of my mother. Well, good. So That's your reframe. Better. It is yes, now your favorite holiday. Yes, ma'am. And when the kids ask you why, because it was my mom. Yes, ma'am. Well, I grew up uh, in Michigan, and of course, we typically had lots and lots and lots and lots of snow. And I was—I can remember. Of course, did I was. Did you have snowball fights? And did you build snowmen? Oh yes, ma'am. Did oh, you yes, sing Frosty the Snowman? Oh, we did everything. We go <laughs> ice skating. We would even build fires. That that the um, the um, ice on the lake was so thick, we could build oh, had bonfires wow. while we ice skated. You know, it was pretty cool, and we, the big thing was we, we would get sleds, because we lived in the country, and we would slide down the, oh. you know, down the big hills. We had big hills. Now you're making me envious. I would love to go and do all of that. Many times we got snowed in for days and couldn't get out. You know, of course, we always had plenty of food, because that was just the way of life in Michigan. Oh. And, of course, I wasn't raised in a Christian home, but my piano teacher did take me to church. And so I'll, that's how I learned about Jesus as a, as a young child. And, uh, and I really am amazed at what you said, because I'm going to start doing what you said. Okay. You know, I'm going to see my granddaughter. We're going to talk about Jesus. And, you know, because I wasn't raised to understand that. And so this was another neat reason why I'm here. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to do that when I go see my granddaughter. I'm going to talk to her about Jesus and, you know, the whole reason for Christmas. Wow. What happened for you? Um, well, I was in New York as a child growing up, and we had the snow. And we had the big family, and my mom's house was the gathering house, and she would always lay out a formal spread with the, the proper china and the proper silverware, and, you know, everyone would gather together at her house. We never had a tree. We, mm -mm. I didn't have a tree until I was in the military and I had a child. We, ne we just... We just never had and a tree. And it never bothered you not having a tree. It did because some of my friends had a tree, but we still got gifts. We just didn't have a tree. Well, who needs a tree if you have gifts? Exactly. Um, so it was kind of like that. My mom, she cooked from scratch. You know, she cooked all night. She was one of those wake up late, wake up in between because she had to do a big spread. All the friends and family, anybody could come over to our house on Christmas and Thanksgiving and get a plate and go home with food and then... Um, we would sit around, we called it talking trash and, you know, bringing up old memories and, you know, just cracking jokes on everybody. So that was really cool. Um, I left home at 17. So my first Christmas away from home was on Guam. Wow, what was <laughs> that like? It was absolutely beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I was single, so, you know, I kind of hung out with some of my friends at it. 
wasn't as festive because I miss my family. I'm the baby of 10. Well, what so, was the weather like? 80, 90. Okay. I was on the beach in a bikini, honestly. Okay. I was just like, just doing I me. Don't know what kind of prophet you are wearing a bikini? Oh, how, how dare I? <laughs> so um, that was really good for me. And then subsequently, I moved to. South Dakota, where it was Ooh. cold again. It was colder. It's a different type of cold. Don't you have to plug your cars up in South Dakota? Yeah, if you wanted to start the next day, you, you okay. really well, want to do that. All um, right. So it's a different type of cold, but then I began to start my own traditions with my family at the time. We opened it with me reading from Matthew, the second chapter, about the birth of Jesus, because he is the reason for all of our seasons, and we do not want to take Christ out of Christmas. We want to celebrate Happy Hanukkah. We want to remember the Feast of Dedication, the Feast of Lights. We want to remember the real purpose for the season. While we're enjoying all the other festivities, we don't want to leave him out of it. Even in our morning that we're opening our gifts and laying to bed at night, I believe that if we talk about this, people will be uh, less likely to be depressed over what they can't afford to buy or what they did not receive. They'll look at the whole purpose behind it. It's not your birthday, but it's real nice if someone decided to give you a gift around his birthday. Jesus touched the hearts of people to give you a gift. And this is not his exact birthday for you theologians that want to try to attack me and so forth. Please do not. This Christmas is not his exact birthday, but it is around the time that we're celebrating. We don't operate by the Jewish calendars. Uh, we're living by King Gregory who de developed the Gregorian calendar. And of course, that's what we operate by in the States. But we don't want to rob old or young of the opportunity to celebrate Christ's Mass. Don't X him out. Keep him in Christmas. And I pray that you have a blessed, healthy, wealthy, enjoying your family, enjoying life, celebrating, waking up, praying, and singing, and enjoying Christmas Day, and marching into 2018, expecting a double fruit, expecting God to double up on the gifts in your life, expecting great things, and thanking him once again for his grace and mercy that you're still here in the land of the living. Have a great Christmas. Happy New Year.